Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you some tricks that I use to make wheel flats for vehicles using sub desurfacing. Okay, so before we dive into making the actual wheel flat, I just want to cover the primitive shapes menu. So there's two ways of dropping the cylinder in. You can press the pointer finger trigger on the right hand controller and adjust the general size of the cylinder, or you can press the pointer finger on the left hand controller and then the right hand controller and have more control over the dimensions of the cylinder before dropping it into space. So now when we put this into edit mode, we can pull the arrows to adjust the general size and then take that cylinder and convert it to sub D. Now when you take a regular cylinder and convert it to sub D, you have no control over the amount of edit points and vertices that that cylinder has. So you could find yourself doing a lot of manual cleanup just to reduce the amount of points. So to avoid this cleanup, we're going to go back to the primitive shapes menu and select subdivision object, and then flick the customize switch to the right. Now when we drop any sub D primitive into the space, we'll have sliders to adjust the number of edge loops for the geometry. Then just press the blue check mark to confirm. This extra step could help you save a lot of time doing cleanup for any geometry that you want to blend into the car surface. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and start to build the wheel flats for this car. I'll go back to the primitive shapes menu and turn off the sub D option. Now we could just drop the cylinder in the space, but it's not going to be placed in a very precise manner. So to give us a little more precision, we're going to press the blue menu button, go to settings and select the beta tab. Here we'll enable the grid tool and then turn on the grid tool with the next slider. Okay, so now that we have the grid tool on, we can just grab the cylinder and rotate it so that it's parallel with the Y axis. Okay, so then let's go back to the beta tab and turn off the grid tool. So now instead of just grabbing the cylinder and moving it, we'll use smart move to shift it down and shift it back so we're overlapping the wheel. Put it into edit mode and adjust the radius of it and then continue to use smart move to generally place it over top of the tire and select the size of the wheel flat that we want. So this will take a little bit of time to adjust and get exactly where you want. And once we have that placement, we can take the cylinder, put it into edit mode, and delete the faces of the cylinder. On the end faces of the cylinder, all the vertices collapse into a single point. So we can just grab that single point, hold it, and delete it. Okay, so now that we have an open face on our cylinder, I want to do a little bit of data cleanup. Now to have some more flexibility here, I'm going to press the blue menu button, go to the settings menu, and turn off vertical lock so that I can rotate this in every direction. So now I'll put the cylinder into edit mode. And just a quick note, if the edit menu gets in your way, you can press the purple button to hide the edit menu while you're working. All right, so now I'll go through and delete every other edge here to lighten up the cylinder. Now we could have had a lighter cylinder using the customize option I showed you earlier, but unfortunately, if we use the customize option, we don't get those little grab handles, allowing us to adjust the radius and the height of the cylinder. So it's better for us to just do a little bit of a workaround and clean up some of the data. Okay, so now let's put this into edit mode, expand the grab sphere by going up on the joystick and use smart move to shift back the edge of the cylinder so that it is placed where we want our wheel flat. Now you don't have to worry about the other side because we're gonna delete that later. Okay, now what we wanna do is take this entire edge and duplicate it outwards to create the flats. So we're going to select auto select loops on our edit menu, select this entire row and engage smart move while we're doing this. Now, the reason we use smart move is because it restricts the data that we're holding to one axis. So in this case, it restricts the data that we're holding to the Z axis. Now, once we've engaged Smart Move and we're holding the edge loop, we'll press the pointer finger trigger on the right hand controller to duplicate that edge loop and then move up or down on the joystick to scale that duplication. So we want to scale that edge further out than we actually need. That way we can trim it down to size. Now that we actually have the wheel flat, we can go to the back of the tire and delete that extra data. Just select the entire edge, hold and delete it. Okay, now let's trim this wheel flat down to size. So we can take the wheel flat, put it into edit mode, and then select anywhere we want to drop a new edge loop, and then delete the excess edge loops. 
So now we have the general shape for our wheel flat. And what we're going to do is put it into edit mode, turn on smoothing, and start to blend this into the body of the car. Okay, so let's grab the edge loop, put it into edit mode, and then press what was the color wheel menu. So this will give us a couple of sub D tools that we can use. So the first thing we wanna do is actually merge the wheel flat to the body. So we'll hover over the merge tool and let go of the color menu button. Now we just need to point and click at the body shape to merge these two pieces of sub D geometry. Now before I do that, I have to go back to the layers and just make sure that the body layer is unlocked. And I might as well take that, drag it onto the same layer as my wheel flat to keep things nice and organized. Okay, so let's try this again. Grab the wheel flat, put it into edit mode, grab the merge tool, point, click, and merge these two pieces of geometry. So now you'll see that there's edit points showing on both surfaces, but they're not actually connected. And this is what we're gonna do next. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is add a little extra loop next to the outer edge loop, just to give ourselves a little barrier to preserve the crease for the wheel weld. Now, what we can do is grab the empty points from the body and drag them over to the edit points on the wheel weld. If you grab the point and move it close to an empty point, it will automatically connect and blend together that surface geometry. Now this is pretty much a game of connecting the points and moving around other points to make sure that your highlights are tracking through. I suggest actually taking your geometry and turning it to a color like blue and using the tune material. This gives you a really good one, two, three value read of what the surfaces are doing. The other thing you can do is go to your edit menu and turn off smoothing. This way you see a low poly version of what the surfaces are doing and it also makes seeing those one, two, three values easier. All right, so now we can take the surface and change it to some sort of a reflective color. In this case, I'll just use the yellow that we had before and set the material to reflective. Now we have a pretty tight radius here on the wheel weld, but if you ever want to tighten things up even more, you can always just point, click, and add an entire edge loop, or use the crease tool. The crease tool is not going to give you any radius, it's just going to leave a very crisp crease. And I want some sort of a radius here because it's really going to do wonders once we take this and toss it into a rendering engine. So instead, I'm just going to click in an extra row of edit points and use that to tighten up my radius. So when making the wheel weld, I've had mirror turned off the entire time, not for any workflow reason, it was just an accident. So the last thing I'm gonna do is mirror everything so that it's all reflected on the other side. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next one.